until law enforcement, correct? That's correct. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner McAleena, it's good to see you again. I want to say at the outset, uh, I respect your service under presidents of both political parties and your career commitment to, to our government and this critical work uh, when it comes to border security. Um, that's why I'm somewhat reluctant to feel I have to ask at the outset uh, what your position was when it came to the zero tolerance policy. Uh, that policy, which uh, was announced last year by the Attorney General and members of the Trump administration, resulted in the forcible separation of 2,800 children from their parents. <laughs> detention, or I should say, the holding of these children, uh, sometimes and most of the time in HHS facilities for some period. And then a fruitless effort to reunite the children with their parents, which ultimately resulted in a court order in San Diego, California by a federal judge. The net result of it was months and months after the separation, most of the children were reunited. I think ultimately 150 or so were not. You gave approval to that policy, did you not? So the, the Zero Tolerance Initiative, Senator, was a prosecution initiative uh, to hold adults accountable for violation of law, whether they crossed at, solo as single adults or brought children with them. Uh, the end catch and release executive order that came out on April 6th, uh, combined with the Attorney General's policy on zero tolerance for immigration violations, CBP is responsible for implementing both of those. And during, during that implementation, we did prosecute adults that crossed with children. In fact, they were the fourth out of five priorities that we sent out to the field uh, for increasing prosecutions. Uh, only about 15% of parents that crossed with children during that time frame uh, were prosecuted. I'm really getting down to the separation of children. I have in my hand the memorandum uh, which was sent to the secretary from your office. And here is the sentence that reads, DHS could also permissibly direct the separation of parents or legal guardians and minors held in immigration detention so that the parent or legal guardian can be prosecuted. So the separation of children was envisioned in your memo giving approval to this zero tolerance policy. We have asked the Inspector General of HHS to take a look at the results of this, the impact on children. You have acknowledged them. Separating infants and toddlers and children from their parents has a negative impact on these kids. What the Inspector General came back to our surprise and reported that in the year before the announcement of this policy, in their words, thousands of children had been separated from their parents as well. Can so, you tell me how many were separated before the announcement of the zero tolerance policy? You've raised three important issues. I would like to address all three. So first, the, the, the quote that you cited talks about a policy of an administrative separation. Now, this would be anyone arriving as a family at the border who doesn't have a valid immigration status, whether it could be prosecuted or separated administratively. No Secretary of Homeland Security has pursued that policy. Secretary Johnson didn't pursue it. Secretary Kelly didn't pursue it. Secretary Nielsen didn't pursue it. That would be family separation. No one has done that. That would have meant during the zero tolerance period, May 5th to June 20th, that over 15,000 families were separated. Do you dispute that 2,800 children were forcibly separated from their parents by the zero tolerance so, policy? You're asking a separate question again, Senator. I want to finish answering your first three, and then we can jump to that if you'd like. Well, so, I'd like you to try to answer them quickly. It, I have a limited amount of time, but right, please we had, proceed. We had 161,000 families arrive at our border last year. If we had administrative family separation policy, all of them would have been separated. So that, that's a very different issue. You referenced the HHS claim that the IG statement that thousands of families could have been separated. We have no evidence for that whatsoever. None. Both before and after zero tolerance, we had the same policies in place for, for any necessary separation for the safety of a how child. Are, how That's can you one ignore what the San Diego court found? 2,800. Are you so disputing that 2,800 I'm not ignoring that. children That's, were that's the third question. separated from their parents? That's the third question, Senator. So the, the Miss L court order directed HHS to go back without time parameters and find children who may have been separated in the process. HHS did that with a very broad set of parameters, including interviewing How children. How many did they find? That, you, you have the court uh, orders and, and responses from the government to those. That's 2,800. That is not the number that CBP separated for the prosecution of the parent. Uh, during the May 5th to June 20th well, period. That's a different number. I, I, I'm going to bow to your definition, whatever it may be, but the fact is a fact. 
that judge was demanding that the federal government of the United States and the Trump administration account for 2,800 kids, where they were and how they could possibly be reunited with their parents. So we can talk about under what law they did it, but thank goodness the president decided to reverse his position publicly after a few weeks of criticism on this approach. Now, let's talk about the word deterrence because I think that gets to the heart of what we're talking about here. Our hearts go out to the families who lost these two children and others that suffered as a result of their decision, their desperate decision to come to the United States rather than continue to live in these three countries. But if we are going to construct a policy of deterrence that involves using children, we're going to have outcomes just as we did with zero tolerance policy. The notion of eliminating florists, which has been suggested over and over again by this administration, will give no protection from children coming to this border from being caged after a period of time or pushed back across the border. Do you believe that that is consistent with the values of the United States? So no one in my uh, understanding from the administration has proposed eliminating Flores. Uh, Flores is a broad settlement that covers treatment of children in federal custody, federal immigration custody. Uh, no one thinks those conditions should be rolled back. Those conditions are very important. The, the piece of Flores that, that needs to be overcome so that we have an immigration system with integrity is the ability to detain families together in a safe and appropriate setting for families so that they can finish an immigration proceeding and either get asylum or if they're not meritorious claims, to be repatriated. That's the part that's being requested to be adjusted. Let me just, I only have 30 seconds left, but let me say thank you for your uh, opening statement and acknowledging that just dealing with our laws and border procedure is an important part of this conversation, but not nearly the whole conversation. We have to ask the fundamental question of why these three countries are generating so many people coming to the United States and what can be done about it. And that involves serious questions about firearms. I said incorrectly earlier that there were 70% of the firearms uh, uh, that were confiscated came from the United States. That was in a Mexican raid. Uh, but I believe the same may be true as well for these three countries. It, what I know what we're doing little or nothing when it comes to, to monitoring the outflow of these firearms from the United States to make these cartels even more powerful in these countries. But I hope that this administration will reestablish programs that the Obama administration had where young people and their families can apply for this status in country without making this dangerous four or five day journey. Uh, the Trump administration eliminated that. And so now the only alternative is if you seek asylum is to present yourself and then wait through the metered acceptance at the ports of entry, which has created a backlog and problems. My time has uh, expired.